Um, good morning. Welcome. You guys get early bird award. Um, I'm Anna Saxenian. I'm dean of the School of Information. And I'm delighted to welcome uh, those of you who are new today, uh, as well as those of you who were with us yesterday afternoon and evening. Um, for those of you that didn't get the word, we actually do have Wi-Fi access here. So yesterday we were deprived of the, <laughs> of the facility. But if you don't have a, a code, Christy in the back can give you one. So yesterday we talked about, we really um, <clears throat> got a great insight into the ecosystem uh, that's developing in the Bay Area uh, of investors and startups that are building this new uh, set of tools, platforms, and services that are allowing us to work with data on a scale that we haven't ever done before, um, and that allow us to analyze and find patterns in data and communicate the findings uh, in a way also unimaginable even a decade ago. And then last evening we heard uh, about how to use data from places like Google that will help us make better predictions. Uh, today we have a really packed day, and um, it's a day that allows us to hear from computer scientists, social scientists, artists, uh, and other professionals who are thinking about the world of data. Um, we want to sort of look at the way that data will affect... <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> the, the data, um, what it means for managers, for scholars, and students, and consumers, uh, both here and around the globe. I think what we're going to do today is to sort of skim the surface of a number of very important issues that are emerging uh, as we move into this, whatever this world of big data is. Uh, and I, I think we should just think about this as the starting point for a conversation um, and, and really a starting point for our collective education about the data revolution and where it is taking us. Um, Mary Meeker, the internet specialist, uh, and f former securities analyst said the other day, the magnitude of upcoming change will be stunning and we're still in spring training. And I think all of us recognize that we're on the verge of something big, but we don't know where it is. Uh, my hope is that we can uh, learn a lot today uh, and <coughs> see this as an annual event where we come together and learn about data um, and where the world of data is taking us. We're really fortunate to have Quentin Hardy with us again today. Uh, Quentin is the Deputy Technology Editor of the New York Times. Uh, he's going to help guide us through today. Um, but before take, turning it over to Quentin, I want to just once again thank our sponsor, um, our lead sponsor, Google, for their generous support of the event and the dinner last night. Uh, thanks also to the teams at Facebook, the McKinsey Global Institute, and O'Reilly Media for their support. Okay, over to you, Quentin. You know, I love technology too, but it's such a nag, <laughs> you know? Well, yesterday we discussed the kind of curve one sees often in technology where you begin with a kind of art and discovery that eventually becomes standardized in science, further standardized in engineering, and then grows to a kind of manufacturing or mass consumption process. And we were trying to talk about where cloud and sensors feeding into the cloud or responding to the cloud uh, and big data, large data sets that are connected to this are in this. And we were talking about a certain level of standardization that is now in process. And we'll touch on that again today. Another theme yesterday, I spoke about the way tools we make to change the world also change us and how certain habits of the data center involving awareness and capability and very, very quick response are creating a kind of social world of Uber, cab, where limousines say, I'm free now, make me a, a cab for hire for a while, or socially the way um, there are online job postings where teams come together on the fly and they're disassembled, and how this might percolate further out into the world. IBM talks about creating enormous efficiencies in processes. So to that kind of... Um, those two themes of standardization but social discontinuity or discontinuity in process. Uh, today, DJ Patel is going to raise the stakes a bit with his talk, Chaos Control, the art of using data to manage today's chaotic world. Uh, there might be some issue about how chaotic this is or what 
color of the time it is that makes this more chaotic than the past. Um, certainly a lot of information is coming at us. DJ Patel is uniquely qualified to talk about this being two generations into the world of chaos. His father, who I believe sits on the board of this institution, uh, is, has been involved in artificial intelligence for some decades. He led the analytics and data team at LinkedIn, which turned the data they held into several products, including the people you may know, the talent match, the career explorer. He holds a PhD from the University of Maryland's Applied Mathematics Department and was in the chaos group there. Um, so he's had a lot of experience in this. He's now the data scientist in residence at Greylock where he's looking at a lot of the companies coming along, trying to help them find their place in a developing ecosystem and has gained some insights into where we are in the curve of this, both as a science and as an evolving business community. So with no further ado, DJ.